Hi friends, you are back with me, Professor Girish Kukreja. Today, what we will talk about is synthesis of your fatty acid. Now, talking about the synthesis of fatty acid, if you remember in our earlier videos, we have talked about the synthesis of triacylglycerol, the synthesis of phospholipids. We have also uh, talked about the degradation of these particular fatty acids. Uh, yes, to just give a recall, if you remember, uh, during the degradation of fatty acid, especially by the process of what is called as beta oxidation, we saw that these particular fatty acids when they are being degraded by beta oxidation the first step in the entire what you call as process of complete oxidation of fatty acid there was an oxidative removal of two carbon units in the form of acetyl-CoA uh, when scientists were working about uh, the synthesis of these particular fatty acid they thought that probably this would be uh, the reversal of the pathway which was for the degradation like the two acetyl coa molecules might be coming together and the sequence of the reactions the four steps uh, reaction sequence which we saw in the beta oxidation uh, would be completely repeated so it would be like if you go in one way it is degradation if you go in the other way it is the synthesis uh, but then later on it was found that uh, many things which happen during the fatty acid synthesis are different than those happen uh, during the fatty acid degradation so uh, scientists worked out that this is not the reversal of what is called as beta oxidation like one of the findings was that uh, the introduction of this particular component that is your malonyl coa this particular intermediate a three carbon intermediate called as malonyl coa is found only during the synthesis of fatty acid which uh, does not show its appearance during the degradation the set of enzymes which are involved in the degradation of fatty acid and in the synthesis of fatty acids are completely different Second important difference they found that the reducing equivalents uh, which are being provided. Now if you see during the degradation we saw that in one step it was FAD which acted as the what you call as uh, electron acceptor, hydrogen acceptor. In the second step of beta oxidation it was your NAD which acted as the uh, what you call as electron or reducing equivalent acceptor. But here it was found that it was NADPH which acts as what is called as your uh, donor of the uh, reducing power or hydrogens uh, during the synthesis. So this also suggested that uh, yes it is not the reversal of what is called as your beta oxidation. Another difference was that uh, if you remember in beta oxidation it was what you call as uh, the SH group um, which was what you call as active of the COASH uh, which was uh, uh, one of the active groups which was important uh, during the degradation of fatty acid. Here also we have SH group but there are two SH groups one of your ACP acyl carrier protein and other of this particular enzyme the beta keto acyl ACP synthase the cysteine SH of that particular enzyme that is responsible for uh, what you call as activation so these three four differences they clearly demark that uh, synthesis of fatty acid is completely different than uh, degradation of fatty acids by beta oxidation so as I told that uh, what is uh, the difference between the two number one formation of the three carbon intermediate malonyl coa found only in the synthesis not in the degradation reducing equivalent acceptor in beta oxidation was fad and nad whereas here the reducing equivalent donor is your nadph there it was the sulfhydryl group of your coash which was activating it and here it is the sulfhydryl group of the acp and the beta ketoacyl ACP synthase. So entire what you call as process of beta oxidation actually occurs in the sequential steps. So there are four sequential steps which is responsible for what is called as synthesis of a typical uh, what you call as fatty acid. So let us see like how it goes about. So as I told uh, that uh, in the first way if you have a 16 carbon fatty acid like your palmitate in this your carbon atom number 16 and carbon atom number 15 these two carbons have been derived from the methyl and the carboxyl group of your acetyl coa whereas all other 14 carbon atoms they are derived from this acetyl coa itself but before that that acetyl coa is converted to malonyl coa so all other 14 carbon atoms they come via malonyl coa whereas your carbon atom number 15 and 16 of a typical palmitate uh, they will come directly from the acetyl coa right so malonyl coa is formed first so your acetyl coa is carboxylated by your acetyl coa carboxylase in an atp dependent reaction where your acetyl coa 
uh, your what you call as biotin there inherent of that particular enzyme is carboxylated first which acts as a transient carrier of that CO2 which is then transferred to the acetyl group to form what is called as your malonyl CoA. So you have converted your acetyl CoA into malonyl CoA. Okay. So you have this particular uh, fatty acid synthesis taking place. I told that this occurs in the sequential steps. How many steps are there? I told four. So there are four sequential steps which are repeating when your fatty acid is being formed. So first your acetyl CoA group will be there. Second your malonyl CoA group will be there. Acetyl CoA group will show its presence only once. Later on it will always be malonyl CoA. So let's start from the first. So your first step is what is called as your condensation. So the first step is what is called as your condensation. So during this particular condensation your activated acetyl group and malonyl group they are already added here these they condense together so here you can see that there is a condensation of these two groups so the first step is what is called as your condensation with the concomitant removal of your carbon dioxide so this extra carbon dioxide which was added here during the formation of malonyl coa from the acetyl coa uh, this is removed. So you have what you call as formation of this particular group here. Then the next step is what is called as your reduction. So next step, the first step is condensation. The next step is what is called as your reduction. So in reduction, uh, as I told that you have your NADPH, NH+, which acts as the uh, donor of the reducing equivalent. So here you have a formation of this NADP+, and there is a reduction here. So you will find that there is uh, addition of these hydrogen. So your uh, ketobutyl group is converted to this particular hydroxyl group. And this particular hydroxyl group will then undergo what is called as your dehydration. So there is next step of what is called as your dehydration. So there is removal of water molecule which introduces a double bond here. So your water it is removed there. So your OH and H will form H2O. So H2 is removed, you have an introduction of the double bond. So the next step is what is called as hydration. So you have formation of trans delta 2 enol CoA kind of thing formed here. This particular uh, double bond is now reduced by what you call as the next step of what you call as reduction. So again you have the reducing equivalents here provided by your NADPH and H plus and you have what you call as this particular group so your saturated butyl group which has increased by two carbon atoms so you had two and two and now you have what is called as your four so you have two SH groups one SH group is that of your ACP and second SH group is that of your ketoacyl synthase all these reactions are catalyzed by these particular enzymes of a typical fatty acid synthase complex. Uh, the motive of this particular video is not actually to explain the each and every step but then still uh, let us have an overview of what happens and you can find a detailed description of what is happening in each step with the uh, nomenclature of the intermediates which are formed in the next video. But here you can have a view of this particular fatty acid, uh, what you call a synthase complex. So typical fatty acid synthase complex you can see has this ACP. ACP, it has this uh, 4 prime phosphopantothene group which acts as a flexible arm which is carrying the growing acyl chain to the active site of these particular enzymes. Then you have this ketoacyl ACP synthase which is involved in the condensation reaction, the first reaction which we saw where your acyl group and your malonyl group, they are what you call as condensed, that is catalyzed by beta ketoacyl ACP synthase. Then you have acetyl CoA ACP transacetylase, which transfers the acyl group from the uh, CoA. Then you have malonyl CoA ACP trans uh, ACP transferase, which is transferring the malonyl group from the CoA to this ACP. Then you have what is called as your enoyl CoA reductase, which is involved in reduction of this enoyl CoA to finally form a saturated what you call as fatty acid. You have beta hydroxyacyl ACP dehydratase which is involved in the dehydration. So a beta hydroxyl group here is dehydrated by beta hydroxyacyl ATB dehydratase. You have beta ketoacyl ACP reductase which is involved in the reduction of this ketoacyl group to form this hydroxyl group. So beta ketoacyl ACP reductase is involved in this particular reduction. So here as I told the acetyl group is transferred, malonyl group is transferred, condensation, reduction, 
dehydration and again reduction so this cycle it operates again and again and once the chain length is reaches around 16 carbon atoms your what you call as uh, the product it leaves the active site of this what you call as your fatty acid synthase so just to summarize the names here you can repeat after me a typical fatty acid synthase complex of e coli comprises of acp the acyl carrier protein which has the phosphor prime phosphopanthetine which has the self hydryl group which acts as the carrier and a flexible arm carrying the growing acyl group on the active site of each enzyme acyl group from acetyl coa and malonyl coa they are transferred by acetyl coa acp trans acetylase and malonyl coa acp transferase so they are going to charge them in dono ka condensation these two they are going to be condensed by beta ketoacyl acp synthase after condensation they are going to be reduced by what is called as your beta ketoacyl acp reductase after reduction there is going to be dehydration by beta hydroxyacyl acp dehydratase and after what you call as dehydrogen dehydration there is going to be again reduction by enoyl acp reductase and you are going to form a typical what you call as your fatty acid again i repeat for a 16 carbon fatty acid your carbon atom are 15 and 16 they have arrived from your acetyl group whereas all others they have come via the malonyl group what are the four steps in a typical fatty acid synthesis for repeating reactions it is the condensation the reduction the dehydration and again the reduction stay tuned with me professor girish kukreja for more in microbiology biochemistry and metabolism thank you